Welcome to the Ghost Stories of the Grand Opera House. I'm your host, Michelle, and over the past few years, I've been collecting the ghost stories and talking with the paranormal investigators who investigate our building. And now I'm sharing all of those stories with you. This week, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. If you're a theater nerd like me, or if you know one, then you probably are already familiar with a bunch of theater superstitions. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about some of my personal favorite superstitions and what their origins might be. So let's get started. We could be better. Things could be better around. You know what Kate Smith used to say about a bad rehearsal? Usually means a bad performance. Hey! One of the most common superstitions you'll hear around the theater is that a bad dress rehearsal means a great opening. You especially hear this when the final dress rehearsal didn't go well and there's an audience the next night. Where this belief comes from is unknown, but likely it started by a director trying to cheer up a cast that had had a particularly bad final dress and needed a pep talk to lift their spirits. The thing is, there may actually be some truth behind this superstition, and not because of ghosts or magic, but because of math. Scottish acting coach Mark Westbrook explains it in his blog as a matter of probability called regression to the mean. It says that if the first time you measure something, that the measurement is extreme, then the next measurement will be much closer to the average. And so if the second measurement is extreme, then the first will be closer to the average. So this means that if the dress rehearsal is terrible, the first night is much more likely to be tons better. And sadly, vice versa, too. Whatever the reason is for the superstition, there are many theater people who swear by the adage, a bad dress rehearsal means a great opening night. I've heard a lot of tips and tricks for actors on how they can learn their lines easier. Things like record yourself reciting them and then play it back. Underline your lines in red ink or in highlighter. Write your lines over and over again. But the trick that actually makes our list of superstitions is the belief that if you sleep with your script under your pillow, you'll learn your lines faster. Now this superstition actually takes it one step further and says that it's good luck to sleep with your script under your pillow because then on opening night, you won't miss any lines and you won't miss any entrances. I don't know how this one got started, but most of the actors I know will take any help they can get. My dearest Angelica, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day. I trust you'll understand the reference to another Scottish tragedy without my having a name to play. Yes, you may have noticed that I'm outside of the theater right now because our last superstition for today involves a word that you should never say inside of a theater. And since I'm a little bit superstitious myself, I definitely won't say the name of the Scottish play inside the theater. That's right. It's considered very bad luck to say the word Macbeth inside a theater. It's one of Shakespeare's most bloody plays and features sword play and witches throughout. There are actually a few thoughts on how this superstition started. The play was first produced in 1606, and there are rumors that the original production was plagued with illnesses, accidents, and that the original actor that played Macbeth may have met an untimely end during the production. There are also at least two recorded incidents of actors dying during the production in the 17th century when a prop dagger was replaced by a real one. The play Macbeth may in some small way be responsible for the Astor Place riots of 1849, which is a whole other episode in and of itself. And there's even the rumor that Shakespeare used actual spells when writing the witch's lines. 
words that were adapted from a black magic book. No matter what the origin of the superstition is, if you slip and say the name of the Scottish play inside of a theater, it's likely that anyone around you will tell you that you need to reverse the curse you've brought down by reciting a line or two from Two Gentlemen of Verona, which is considered a lucky Shakespearean play, or part of Puck's epilogue from A Midsummer Night's Dream. Even going outside of the theater and spinning around three times and spitting over your shoulder, or any variety of these remedies. So, since I've seen the name of the Scottish play a few times, I think I better go spin around and recite some lines to counteract the curse, just to be safe. Tune in to next week's Ghost Stories of the Grand Opera House for more theater superstitions. And until then, stay spooky. Do you love seeing the digital content from the Grand? Want to see more? Consider making a small donation to help us keep creating. You can make a donation by going to thegrandoperahouse.com and clicking the heart at the top of the page.